Hello and welcome to Econ 202 Macroeconomics Chapter 7 Workout Problem Video. In problem 1, we're going to do a problem that is related to growth, the percentage of growth. It says an economy starts off with a GDP per capita of $5,000. How large will the GDP per capita be if it grows at an annual rate of, and then it gives us four uh, scenarios to work out. So the first scenario is if it grows at 2% for 20 years. Okay, so the main, the main thing is we need to take the GDP or the GDP per capita to begin with. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually write it up here on top. So we're gonna, we're gonna take our, our GDP, okay, in this, in this case, it's, it's uh, per capita, right? So capita, per capita, okay? And we're gonna multiply that by our 2% here. And what we do is we, we take our 2% and we, we turn it into 1.02, right? So this 0 0.02 is 2%. This one is going to return the original amount of GDP, right? And so that's going to be 1.02 to the uh, 20th power, right? So this is the amount of years, okay? So it's exponents is, is kind of the way this works. And so on your calculator, depending on which calculator you're using, right? If you have an exponent key on your calculator, that would work. If you don't, if you have a, uh, a key that kind of looks like this, uh, it's x and then it has y for example x to the x to the y is a kind of a key it looks like that that could work as well so what you do is you put in your 1.02 and then you hit your x y key right x your exponent key and then you type in 20 and that'll take uh 1.02 to the exponent of 20 okay and then you multiply it by your five uh your five thousand this is the GDP per capita, right? So it's 5,000 times uh, the, the 1.02 to the 20th equals your answer, okay? And, the, and it looks like this. This is kind of the way it looks, right? So this is the, the way it first works out, and this is your answer, okay? So you keep going with, with that uh, formula for the second and the, and the third and the, the fourth right there. And, and we see, of course, it makes sense that uh, the percentage of growth makes an impact, has an impact on the total uh, GDP per capita in the end, and so does the time. So if this percentage works over a longer period of time, of course, your GDP has a chance to grow uh, that much more. So that's kind of the way that works out. And really, I think the, the only trick with this is just understanding the, the making sure you, you have a calculator, right, that you can use to do this calculation. Again, this right here is your percentage, right? Right here, 2%, 4%, 6%. The one in this case is returning the original full amount. So it's kind of like 102% is kind of the way that this whole uh, component right here works out, right? And so you, and then you apply the exponent to that. Um, in this case, it's 20 years. This is 40, these are all 40 years down here, the last three or 40 years times your GDP. Okay, so now on to problem two. Now we're talking about growth rates. An economy starts off with a GDP per capita of 12,000 euros. How large will the GDP per capita be if it grows at an annual rate of, okay, so this is exactly the same thing we did before. So now you just need to apply the same uh, calculation or the same formula to this, right? So we start off, of course, with our 12,000 euros. Then we, then we find our percentage here. And we plug that in as, as 1.03, right? To the, here's our years right there, to the 10th, to the power of 10. There you go. And so let's, it looks like this, right? Then the second one will look like this, and then the third, okay? Now we're on to problem number three. 
So now we're talking about productivity. So the first one's just growth, right, over time. And that's really what the, the chapter seven was about is kind of growth. And now we're, and, and we know that, that productivity of the uh, human capital, right, is going to add to the growth as well. So we're gonna do this problem set here. It says, say that the average worker in Canada has a productivity level of $30 per hour. Well, the average worker in the United Kingdom has a productivity level of $25 per hour, both measured in US dollars. This is important because we need, we need to uh, compare apples to apples, right? So can, Canada has their currency, United Kingdom has their currency. We need to actually make it similar by converting the currencies into US dollars. So that's already been done for us, so that is nice continues it says over the next five years say the worker productivity in Canada grows at 1% per year while the worker productivity in the UK grows by 3% per year uh, this could be for many different reasons right it maybe is because of the use of technology it could be further education it, it could be maybe uh, uh, just a mixture of how labor law works and getting the most productivity out of the people that are working. So the, the, the question is this, it says, after five years, who will have the higher productivity level and by how much? Okay, so here's the answers below, right? So the Canadian workers productivity will be this, right? So same formula as in the growth, right? So because it's growing at a certain rate, and so we can see that, this is the rate, this is 1%, right? And this is how many years? This is the original amount. So we, we say the original amount growth over time is gonna equal that. Same thing down here in the UK. UK, they start out uh, lower productivity, but they're growing at a higher rate. Same amount of years, five years. And so here they are. They Were they able to catch up? No, right? Okay, and then we, we and then we take the difference between these two, and we can tell by how by how much, right? Now, how much are they different? Um, the UK definitely was able to make up some of the difference, but not all of it. Okay, productivity number two. This is some productivity here. It says, say the average worker in the U.S. economy is eight times uh, the productivity as an average worker in Mexico. If the productivity of U.S. it doesn't mean you know the, the the worker in U.S. is any better necessarily in in many ways than Mexico. Maybe they just have more education. Maybe they have more technology at, in their hands. Whatever the case is, right? Uh, if the productivity of U.S. workers grow at two percent for 25 years, and the productivity of Mexico's workers grows at six percent for 25 years, which country will have the higher uh, worker productivity at that point. That point meaning 25 years from now. Okay. So here we go. If M is the productivity of the Mexican worker initially, then at the end of 25 years, the Mexican worker will have a productivity of M times, this is the percentage of growth, this is the years. So here's the total productivity, right? Or total um this is the exponent, right? So this M is the original amount. So, because they don't give us an original amount, right? This is the original, right? This is 4.3 is what we get when we multiply our 1.06, or when we take it to the 25th, right? Exponent of 25th, we get this 4.3, okay? So now we're looking at the US worker eight times the productivity to begin with. It doesn't say actually what it is, right? Let's say it's eight and the other one's one, for example, right? Uh, so this is eight times M uh, times the same growth component. So this is the growth component. Now it's 13.1. So this is, this is gonna be the result of our 1.02 to the 25th times our eight, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna have those together and that'll give us 13.1 M, okay? 
So the U.S. worker productivity will be just over three times more than the, the Mexican productivity at the end of 25 years. So this is, this is the result, right? 13.1 is our result. 4.3 is the result for the Mexican worker. And so now the difference is, instead of being eight times, it's actually going to be just over three times. And we get that by taking, okay, we, we divide, right? 13.1, we divide 4.3 into that, right? And that gives us just a little over three, which means that 13.1 uh, is just three, a little over three times more than uh, the, the Mexican productivity after the 25 year period. So hopefully this video helps you kind of work those out and understand some of the things. You're gonna see some of these uh, similar types of problems on the exam as we go forward. So hopefully that helps and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, bye.